to another edition of Booty and Barbones, Josh Booty. I'm Rachel Barbeau, and it is Championship Week, Conference Championship Week, and we are so excited to be joined by Florida great Shane Matthews. Shane, how are you? I'm doing well. How are y'all? Hey, can't awesome. complain. Championship football uh, week, uh, football weekend coming up. Uh, let, let me just get right to it, Shane. Your new coach, a lot of people, you know, they wondered what he'd be able to do with an offensive line and, 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 and offensively, particularly, we knew that you guys were going to have a great defense, but really overachieved in the, in the first half of the season and, and did a miraculous job in coaching. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I think the entire Gator Nation is excited for Jim McElwain and his staff, what they brought to the table um, to be 10-2 at this, this moment playing, you know, in Atlanta. I don't think anyone would have dreamed of that. Um, you know, we all knew going into the season we'd be very, very strong on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, offensively, we'd, we'd be challenged, and it's kind of been that way all year long. Uh, we've had some breaks throughout the year, um, mm -hmm. but the ball has bounced our way. What is uh, – Shane, I appreciate you joining us. Uh, what, what do you think uh, Jeff Collins and that uh, Florida defense has really got to do with, uh, you know, the running game, the balance of Bama? Uh, of course, with Derrick Henry, the big bruising back, he's, he's been getting over 30 carries in the last few ball games and it's seen uh, the, the last few SEC matchups that they've played in. And what do you think they've got to do to really neutralize – the running game, and then, of course, uh, put Coker in some tough situations. What, are they going to blitz a ton, or what do you think they're going to have to do? Well, I think they'll do a combination of both. They'll probably do more run blitzes than pa pass blitzes. Uh, you know, they've been pretty solid all year long on defense, haven't given up a whole lot of big plays. The strength of the defense is in the secondary, probably the best secondary in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, on the, the front seven has played extremely well. They'll be without Alex McAllister, who's a, a tremendous pass rusher. Uh, and Jonathan Buller's uh, kind of been dinged up quite a bit. I'm sure he will play in this game. But, you know, I, I see Derrick Henry getting his yards. I don't see him getting a ton of yards. Uh, you know, I think this will be a defensive struggle. Uh, field position will be critical. Um, but, obviously, you want to make J uh, Jake Coker try to beat you. Talk about Jeff Collins and the impact that he's had. I covered him at Mississippi State, the Minister of Mayhem, I know the players loved playing for him, a really upbeat defensive coordinator. I mean, I, you know, you don't get the Minister of Mayhem nickname for nothing. What kind of <laughs> impact has he had on campus in that football program? Well, I think he's brought a lot of excitement. You know, they, they've kind of adopted this money down thing on third down. You know, it's mm -hmm. blasted, you know, with rap music all, you know, whenever they're down the big screens in the stadium they got kids on the sidelines holding these money down signs so you'll see that in the georgia dome the fan the band has kind of bought into it as well uh, he's done a tremendous job and let's give a lot of credit to will muschamp too he's the one that recruited these kids uh they were always strong on defense when when he was the head coach so uh but but jeff collins has you know he basically when he took over the job you know a lot of coordinators implement their terminology and it's difficult for kids to learn. What he did was he kept the same terminology Will Muschamp had, and he had to learn what they call things. So I think that was a huge advantage for our players. Um, let's, let's, I guess, turn, shift our gears to the offense. We, you know, we know that uh, Florida and their their quarterback position has been a has been kind of an issue all year long with the with what happened with Will Greer, and it seemed like they were off to such a great start. They had figured out who they wanted to be their QB. He had had real success in the middle part of the season, and then all of a sudden the news broke that uh, you know he was going to be out for a season uh, for using illegal you know banned substance, and we all hated it because we we all wanted Florida to have that kind of awesome type of year and get to this game. And they've managed to, you know, play themselves into this SEC matchup, a matchup with Alabama with Treon Harris, a guy that, uh, you know, at the beginning of the season uh, was in the quarterback battle, right, with Will Greer and, and brings a lot to the table. What does Treon Harris or, or how has he progressed in your mind or has he progressed enough to lead the Florida offense in a way where, you know what, with a turnover or two on defense, with a nice stop, maybe with a great special teams play, and then some 
uh, really good, um, you know, out of the pocket plays or something by Treon Harris, where they could actually stay in this ball game and uh, you know play with a team like Alabama. What do you think Treon's going to have to do, or what do you think are his strengths and weaknesses? Well, he, he's going to have to make some big plays somewhere down the line. That's what we haven't had the last four or five weeks. You know, whether it's just completing a deep post or a deep ball or a reverse or or something, we need some big play capability, and that's what we're lacking right now. Uh, it, it's going to be tough sledding. There's no question about it, especially with Alabama's front seven, probably the best in the country. Um, you know, we're going to need to try to stay balanced, uh, run Kelvin Taylor. He may not get a whole lot of yards, but he's been running extremely, extremely hard the last few weeks. Um, we're just, you know, quite honestly, we're just very limited on offense. Uh, we are, we're going to have to score defensively and in the special teams and hope we get a couple of turnovers win the you know the field position battle to have a chance i mean alabama is that good on defense Mm -hmm. and uh we're just we're just not there where we need to be on offense at this time shane what's the latest on will greer i know the country wants to know outside the football program you have your thumb on the pulse of what's going on there at florida what is the latest with his appeal or what's going on with will greer well his appeal was denied uh he will not be eligible to play until I, it's either game six or game seven next year. So, you know, what Florida, you know, they're, they're heavily looking at, you know, quarterback options, uh, trying to get some, you know, big five-star kids to commit to them, probably try to bring in two of those. Uh, I've also heard that they're looking at to try to bring in a fifth-year transfer guy, uh, which I think they need someone uh, until the true freshman are ready to play. You just don't want to go into an SEC schedule with true freshmen, in my opinion. Uh, I would love to see them try to find a fifth-year guy who has some experience throwing the football. I know that there are two great high school quarterbacks in the state of Florida, one Felipe Franks, who decommitted from LSU this week, and because of all the stuff that's happened there with Les Miles and the uncertainty of the offense and Cam Cameron, them saying that he wasn't going to be a part of that staff next year. And then you've got a guy named Shea Patterson who um, actually played for my dad at Calvary Baptist, moved on and and started for IMG Academy that's committed to Ole Miss. And uh, I guess I'm I'm sure Florida's continuing to recruit both of those kids, even though, and we see kids commit and decommit all the time, but Florida really needs to get an uh, an offensive threat at the quarterback position to to take it to the next level. And I guess are those two guys – uh, guys that uh, you've seen on Florida's radar and who is on you guys' radar uh, or have y'all signed or have uh, not signed but have a guy committed to come in next year that's a senior in high school? Well, Felipe Franks, as you mentioned, from Wakulla here in the state of Florida uh, has verbally committed now to Florida, which oh, as, we, as we all know, that means absolutely nothing these <laughs> days. These kids are switching weekly. Uh, I know that uh, a big time five star recruit. I think his name is Dwayne Haskins out of Maryland. Was has been on campus, and and they just recently mentioned that the number one drop back pass in the country. Uh, last kid's name is Eason that would have been committed to Georgia yep. is coming is coming on a visit. So, you know what Jim McElwain is trying to do. They want to bring in one or two guys that are your prototypical drop back passers. Uh, that's what he wants. That's what he's always had in his his offenses. You know, a six two six three guy that can can sling it. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's still a going to be a process. I, I just, <clears throat> regardless if you sign any of these big time kids, I just have a hard time believing we can go into the season with a true freshman. Now, supposedly a couple of them will be early enrollees in January, so they'll get to uh, go through spring practice. But mm-hmm. I I personally hope we try to find a, a fifth year guy who. Uh, who understands the passing game that they would love to come play for the Florida Gators. Maybe a fifth year guy or a Juco guy. I mean, yeah, e- either one of them. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Get somebody in there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Somebody that, that we can, you know, run an offense that, that what they want to run that, uh, you know, we got to get the passing game going here again. There's no question gotta, about that. You got to find someone that you can build the offense around. I know, you know, back in the early 90s, they built in Florida and Spurrier built an offense around you. You were a three-time All-SEC player, and 
you know, this week, I guess, uh, this week with Bama being such a, a, a huge force to, to, to reckon with, we I talked to some Bama guys earlier today, actually, and they said, hey, they were a little worn out. It's been a long stretch of the season, and I, I can only imagine how some of these teams that aren't as deep as Alabama, how worn out they are from SEC play. So I'm, we're hoping Florida can, uh, you know, stand up to the challenge, and it's going to be, uh, a, 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 hopefully it'll be a wonderful ball game. Well, I hope so. We're not very deep, and we got a lot of injuries on the defensive line. But, you know, this is a game that, that you, you know, you put on the calendar that you want to get to Atlanta. So mm-hmm. I'm sure if guys are banged up, they're going to find a way to play. And I will tell you this, Florida's going to come out there. They're going to run out of the tunnel, as Coach McElwain, like said, we'll show up, uh, and they're going to play hard. Uh, the defense will keep it close. As long as we don't turn it over on offense, our defense is that good. Um, I think you're going to see the two best defenses in the country, by the way, in the Georgia Dome. Shane, last question for me. When I started this season covering college football, I'm teen years now, I never thought that we would see um, Spurrier gone. I never saw thought that we would see Rich gone. I never thought that – and I, I knew how good of a coach Coach Mack was and is because I covered him in Alabama. But I didn't think he would have this success so soon. I'm just curious on your thoughts – on just the crazy offseason that's going to be the coaching carousel and the changing face of the East. Yeah, it's 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 strange. I mean, uh, I mean, you look at Mark Rick, what he's done at Georgia. I mean, uh, he, he's a great guy, great coach, won a lot of football games, but hasn't played for a national title. And I guess what that's what every booster club wants to do now. I think Alabama spoiled everybody because it seems mm-hmm. like they're playing every year. I mean. I think Les Miles has done a tremendous job there. I think their problem is the quarterback position. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if the bottom line is if you don't have a solid, consistent player at that position, you're probably not going to be in the hunt. You're probably not going to win a lot of games. And I think that's the biggest thing right now is you got to find a guy to play the most important position in all sports. If you have that guy, you got a chance to, to, to be in it. I mean, you look at – you know, Clemson's got a great quarterback. Oklahoma's got a great quarterback. Alabama, Coker's, I would say, average, but they got tremendous players around him. Um, and that's pretty much what you got to have nowadays if you're going to be successful and be a successful coach. There's no doubt about it. Tell, I guess tell me this in, in closing. Um, huge games this weekend, of course, Bama, Florida being the one that we're concentrating on the most. This is an SEC site. But uh, per, give me a per, your prediction on, on the game, and then I want to ask you about these a couple of these others. Well, <clears throat> I'm anxious to watch the Clemson, North Carolina. I know Larry Fedora real well. Uh, I think he's had a tremendous year. Um, they can cause some problems for Clemson. I still think Clemson wins it. Uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of Bobby Stoops, obviously, with his years here at Florida. Uh, sure. Baker Mayfield has had a tremendous year as well. So, they're sitting in the clubhouse. They're definitely going to be in the Final Four. And I'm anxious to watch that Michigan State-Iowa game. Um, you know, a lot of people don't give Iowa any respect. I've yet to see Iowa play one down of football this year, quite honestly. So uh, it'll be be entertaining, I guess, to watch that. Uh, but, you know, all eyes are on the SEC. This, is, this, this game, to me, in the Georgia Dome, regardless of who's playing in it, because I go to it every year, is the best atmosphere in all of sports. Yes. I've been to, I've been to Super Bowls, I've been mm-hmm. to national championship games, but there is nothing like the SEC championship game. Shane, thank you so much for spending <clears throat> some time with us today. All right, guys, I appreciate it. Y'all take care. Yep, all right. All right, see you soon, man. Thank Bye, you. Shane.